Good morning, everyone, and welcome uh, to this press conference today on the last day of the winter. Um, welcome to everyone who, who took the effort to come here for this conference, and also welcome to everyone who is uh, live streaming uh, from social media. <clears throat> My name is Adam Strutz. I am Head of Policy and Action uh, at AfriForum, and next to me is Johan Krier, who is also a member of AfriForum's uh, policy committee and who is in charge of AfriForum's um, local branches and community structures uh, all over South Africa. Today we will be discussing the tax crisis in South Africa um, and we will be launching or publishing our tax manifesto, which will also signal the start of a campaign uh, in this regard. But to start, maybe we believe it's important to make some introductory comments. Uh, if, if conservatism means that we want to return to the past or that we don't want change, then AfriForum is certainly not a conservative organization. If conservatism means that communities should have autonomy, that communities should be free uh, to decide over things that are important to them, then we are certainly a conservative organization. If liberalism means that you have no sense of morality or that we are all just detached individuals um, who are not part of something that is bigger than ourselves, then AfriForum is not a liberal organization. If liberalism means that you believe in accountable government, in limited government, in, in balance of power, then AfriForum is certainly a liberal organization. AfriForum has sometimes been described as an anti-revolutionary or counter-revolutionary organization. And although we, we laugh at this description, there is a strong element of truth in this because our organization is by definition, by definition, we believe that revolutions uh, are destructive by the very nature of, of what that means. Um, Every forum does not believe in that revolution is, is the solution. We do not believe that uprisings is the solution. We are a reformatory organization. Uh, we believe that in order to have appropriate change in a society, what you need is not a revolution, but reform. Um, but sometimes, as we've seen in, in world history, um, in places like France and America and in England and many other places in the world, sometimes you reach a point, and South Africa, I should add, where, where reform is necessary to prevent some form of a more aggressive uprising. And what we have seen in, in the last few months and the last few years in this country is increased voices coming to the fore from different spheres of society, calling for some form of a tax protest to say that we cannot simply continue the way things are going. We cannot, keep, we cannot simply uh, sit idle and keep paying taxes while we know that firstly, a lot of that money will be stolen by corrupt government officials. Secondly, that those government officials will not be prosecuted. And thirdly, that in such cases where the money is not stolen, oftentimes it goes to, to the funding of destructive economic policies that, that will only serve to, to place an even harsher burden on taxpayers. Um, and the appropriate way to prevent some form of an uprising like this, or some form of a protest like this, is to have reforms. Um, and to have these reforms to make sure that they are timely, they must be early enough, and also it must be comprehensive enough, it must be sufficient. We are concerned that South Africa is on the road to some form of, of a tax revolt or a tax uprising, however you want to, to describe it. Um, and we believe that the way to prevent this from happening is for the South African government to start doing certain things and to stop doing certain things, which we will deal with now in, in this manifesto, which we intend to publish. And our aim is not to encourage this, as I've said, but or is not to encourage some form of an uprising, but to try to prevent some form of an uprising. Um, we believe, however, that it is, it is, um, it is inevitable if, the, if we continue down this path on which we currently are. If the South African government does not take this crisis seriously, if they do not take this call for tax reform and tax reform in the in the broad sense of the word seriously, they are going to have problems that are going to be much more difficult to deal with down the line than uh, the problems that they would have to deal with if they if they resort to a solution 
as in the current situation. With that, before we go to the manifesto, I will hand over to, to my colleague, Johan Kreer. Thank you, Aaron. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My message this morning is, is, is very simple. From, from the ground, from our structures, the message is simple. We've had enough. We are angry. No more tax abuse. No more corruption with our tax money. This message is a simple message, but a very clear one this morning, that the ANC and the government and broader society will ignore at their peril. The, the taxpayer has had enough, and, and, and today is a moment that, that one must remember, a moment that, that signals the dawn of, of a new dispensation where the taxpayer simply has had enough and wants reform in, and wants it fast, wants a responsive government and wants a government that is not tone deaf. We have been, uh, we have been warning for many months that, that this sort of thing is on its way. We, we are inundated with, with daily, daily calls for, for, for a tax revolt, a tax protest of, of some sort. And what, what happening here is today is Afri Forum taking the lead to say, um, we are the last line. If you don't come to the table, uh, the, uh, the, the ground swell will be too big. We've seen in recent months um, what protests of some sort can, um, can, um, can, can, can happen in South Africa. This is, is this a different sort of warning that we're raising, a red flag to say, to say listen up. And, and it appears that ANC is, is, is still not listening. Um, in, in, in the recent week, we've, we've heard of a 12% um, uh, the Department of Social Development has, has proposed a green paper where a 12% a contribution or a tax towards a social fund um, is, 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 is um, contemplated and seriously contemplated. Um, a clear indication only in the recent week of, of a government that's tone deaf and um, and today marks uh, marks a first step to a uh, to a much larger larger tax protest um, and and calls for tax uh, reform. Thank you, Aaron. So with that, um, we will read the tax manifesto that um, Africa Forum publishes today. It is available on the website in Afrikaans Belasting Manifest, the Afrikaanse weergave is ook daar and in English, tax manifesto, etc. I will read through the preamble and declaration in the first section, and then my colleague, Johan, will read through the demands, through the practical things that we, uh, we demand in terms of this manifesto. We, the taxpaying members of the South African public, hereby declare as follows. Whereas the state, as we know it today, was theoretically established through a mutual agreement between citizens, with the aim of ensuring their freedom and basic rights in a sustainable manner. And whereas the most basic function of the state is to ensure that the citizenry is safe, that the basic requirements for freedom are satisfied and that their property is protected. And whereas the government, government manages the administration of the state and whereas government is financed by us, the tax paying members of the public in order to execute these functions. Declaration. As taxpaying members of the South African public, we therefore declare the following. The South African government fails in keeping the people of the country safe. South Africa is one of the most violent countries in the world. More than 20,000 people are murdered annually in South Africa. Stated differently, more than half a million people have been murdered since the ANC took over the government. The South African police service and other national security forces are hopelessly inept in times of crises. The National Police Commissioner himself has said that the SAPS is unable to fulfill its constitutional mandate. The South African government fails in protecting the, the feasible freedoms of local communities. This is evident from, among others, a long list of pointless regulations carried through by the state during the COVID-19 pandemic that are tantamount to indefensible offenses against life, bodily integrity, and the public's freedoms. Moreover, 
almost all prominent international institutions that monitor transgressions of the law increasingly express their concern over transgressions by the South African government. This is evident from conspicuously ill-considered legislation and blatantly discriminating features, measures that, that merely lead to more power being centralized in the government and that bring about more and more restrictions on public freedom. The South African government fails in ensuring the preservation of private property rights and the basic prerequisites for a working market economy. This has been evident since 2018 from attempts to amend the constitution to allow the state to confiscate the properties of taxpaying citizens. It is also evident from a wide range of laws and regulations that are promulgated in terms of which the economy and business sector are excessively limited to such a degree that it is increasingly difficult for taxpaying citizens to start and manage businesses, find work or appoint employees. The South African government fails in effectively governing the country. This is evident from service delivery protests and legal actions against the state as a result of the non-compliance with basic responsibilities that have become an everyday part of the South African society. These protests often turn violent and lead to bloodshed. Moreover, no or poor service delivery, which includes issues such as electricity and water provision, as well as the maintenance of roads and sewage systems, not only leads to, to the inconvenience, but also causes death. The South African government fails in governing a trans in a transparent manner. There reigns a culture of wanton corruption and looting of state funds, which has resulted in the state suffering damages of around 1 trillion uh, rands over the past two decades. Instead of leading the fight against corruption, state officials rather find themselves leading state capture and criminal, criminal behavior. The crisis is especially evident through the corruption of state officials and their patronage networks that reigned supreme during the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite damning proof of corruption that are, that are continuously brought against senior government officials, almost no criminal prosecution follows in this regard. It is clear that the president's statements on corruption are nothing more than mere lip service and that the promotion of corruption remains a far greater priority for the government than the fight against it. Unemployment is taking on critical dimensions. Governments continuously poor policy decisions and its inability to create a work environment in which the economy can thrive have plunged a whole generation into misery. This while government continues to subject society to pointless and destructive policies. In this regard, the ruling party governs actively against its own citizens. As taxpayers, we are acutely aware that our continuous payment of taxes is the only reason why the state is still able to continue its destruction and plundering. South African taxpayers are fed up with seeing how taxpayers' money is being wasted, plundered, or misappropriated. Ordinary taxpayers receive no or very little value for tax money and in many respects must pay themselves for critical services for which tax is being levied. These include private medical care, private security, private education and training, and the continuous and, continuous and reliable electricity as water and water provision. Considering the circumstances, namely, that the citizenry cannot entrust their taxpayers' money to an accountable government, the question arises whether it is still necessary to pay taxes at all. For ordinary citizens, it is simply too much to think that they should continue paying taxes when it is clear that their tax money is being mismanaged, stolen, and looted to a great extent to the benefit of an oligarchic Larsenius elite under the, mis under the management of an ANC leadership. To continue paying taxes under these circumstances seems to be a form of support and empowering of this malpractice. Given these circumstances, it is completely understandable that citizens would want to apply and support a form of tax protest. It has already taken on the following forms. Tax retention, tax evasion, tax avoidance, tax delay, and immigration. There is a call from all quarters for some or other form of tax revolt because 
This is seen as the only way in which government can be called to account. Dispute. In the light of this, we hereby declare a dispute with the South African government. We declare that we cannot continue to finance a corrupt system. It is time that government is called to order. Secretariat. As a civil rights organization, AFRI Forum will constitute an independent civil secretariat that will represent the organization's members as well as the signatories of this manifesto with, which, uh, with respect to the demands that follow. The purpose of this secretariat is to prevent a civil tax revolt by making sure that, that the state takes the necessary steps to carry through tax reform, to make the market more accessible to taxpayers and to follow the necessary criminal procedures to eradicate corruption. The Secretariat will be compri comprised exclusively of citizens and will function without state interference. Thank you, Arons. Let me continue with the demands that, that's put forward in this manifest. We, the taxpaying members of the South African public, therefore demand the following. That this Secretariat is recognized by government as a legitimate body that represents a significant portion of the country's taxpayers and that also has a constructive role to play in making sure that tax play, taxpayers are satisfied with the way in which their tax money is being appropriated. That the President and the Ministers of the applicable State Departments meet with the Secretariat to discuss the demands set out in this document. That this Secretariat's overview function over National Treasury's appropriation of taxpayers' money is recognized. The Secretariat must, must have adequate access to information to be able to execute this overview function. That tax federalism and the tax autonomy of communities are recognized by establishing the management of and participation in deliber deliberations about tax money in relation to local communities. That community public partnerships and public private partnerships, uh, public private partnerships, apologies, are established to develop cooperative community management models for municipal development. That the work of the Auditor, Auditor General is augmented by this body through independent quantifying and or monitoring of corruption and the maladministration of taxpayers' money, after which guilty state officials must pay this money back to the public and must be prosecuted. To the extent that the guilty state official cannot be determined, the ruling party must accept responsibility. The tax secretariat will serve a supervisory function by ensuring that this demand is executed effectively. That the amend amendment to the constitution that will allow the state to expropriate property without compensation is suspended immediately. That the continued funding of failed state enterprises is suspended immediately. That corrupt state officials, cadres of the ruling party and their networks are prosecuted immediately and that various specialist tribunals and courts are established for this purpose, which tribunals and courts are properly empowered and not subjected, subjected to political pressure or interference. And lastly, that tax rebates, for example, uh, introduced for services that taxpayers must pay tax for, but for which taxpayers are compelled to pay a second time to private institutions to ensure that these services are uh, indeed obtained that tax uh, rebates be introduced for those sort of services. These include, for example, tax rebates for proven expenses to ensure personal safety. Okay. Um, some conclusion um, or some comments to conclude. Um, AFRI Forum, as we know, is a civil rights organization with um, about 290,000 members. We are approaching the 300,000 mark. And when we say members, we mean people who make monthly contributions to our work, to what we do. So uh, that means that Afri Forum's support is much larger or much bigger than, than simply its membership base. 
because membership, the members number indicate people who are actively involved by making financial donations. Um, this manifesto is, is AfriForum's manifesto. It was, it's published today on behalf of our members. Um, but we also want to broaden our mandate in this regard, which is why we published this manifesto online on, on the website taxmanifesto.co.za, through which members of the public can, can give their support or add their names um, to, to support the content of this manifesto, to, to strengthen our mandate in this regard. Um, we regard this as step one of a much broader campaign, which will be one of AfriForum's core priorities in the months that follow. Uh, during this campaign, several initiatives have already been planned or have already been uh, prepared, which includes two reports, which we will publish in the months to follow um, with regard to tax, different aspects about tax in South Africa, the extent of tax abuse, uh, different strategies that can, can be followed in this regard. Um, and then also, a, of course, a public support campaign, uh, particularly for the content of this manifesto. Um, we sincerely hope that the South African government take this issue seriously. Um, uh, we will obviously send uh, this manifesto today to the office of the state president um, and to several other um, cabinet ministers or representatives of the South African government to, to ensure that this matter is brought under their attention. And as far as this issue is concerned, we will certainly make sure that our members and members of the public are uh, kept up to date and informed about um, what is to follow. With that, we conclude. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, we will gladly deal with them. Thank you very much. So uh, obviously we will issue a press statement. Um, the statement is being, will be issued shortly after this conference and um, we are available also if, uh, for interviews and if people need more clarification on this issue. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.